Hey, 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 Donald Ray here to save the day. Hey, everybody. Hey, coming to you with another video. Hope you like it. Hope you like it. If you get some value from this, thumbs up. If you don't get any value from it, still thumbs up because you love me so much. Hey, this video is talking about even some organic foods pack a high pesticide risk. But of course, this is coming out of Canada. So let's get into it. Watermelon, green beans, and bell peppers are among the many common fruits and vegetables found in the U.S. supermarkets that contain potentially unsafe levels of pesticides, according to an analysis by Consumer Reports. The new report, which analyzes seven years of U.S. Department of Agriculture data on commonly eaten fruits and vegetables, offers one of the most comprehensive evaluations to date of pesticides found in U.S. produce. The data was based on nearly 30,000 fruit and vegetable samples, including fresh, frozen, canned, and organic, collected from supermarkets by the USDA as part of a routine pesticide testing. Now, remember, we're talking about where they got the testing results from, but they didn't say these, this produce came from United States farms. They're just talking about the produce that we're seeing in our U.S. grocery stores. Consumer Reports built a huge database to analyze the data and scored different foods to provide actionable recommendations to help consumers shop and eat with less risk. Consumer Reports found that pesticide residues found a significant risk in roughly 20% of the 59 common foods examined in this research. The foods deemed high risk included conventional grown, non-organic kale, blueberries, potatoes, and bell peppers. Now, apples, grapes, peaches, tomatoes, spinach, and celery were among the items considered moderate risk. Organic fruits and vegetables generally had far less pesticide residue than conventional grown foods, according to this research. But even a few organic foods post some risk. For example, imported green beans, they carry a high risk, and domestic potatoes, a moderate one. Raising questions about how these organic crops were contaminated with high-risk pesticides, not approved for organic farming. Imported, conventionally grown produce also posed high risk than the United States grown foods in this study. I did a video a while back, and it's on an article that we talked about the FDA's vigilant over 10 years of imported foods. Get a chance, you need to watch it. Foods grown in Mexico, such as strawberries and green beans, were especially worrisome. Mexican strawberries contained oxydimentin methyl, part of a group of pesticides called organophosphates that are neurotoxins. This category of insecticides can overstimulate the nervous system at high exposure levels and disrupt the developing nervous system for infants and children. Very, very important to know this. For consumer reports to deem a fruit or vegetable high risk, only a relatively small portion of samples had to be contaminated. Now remember, this was coming from Consumer Reports, their status based on high risk. The testing involved hundreds of samples for each food collected from U.S. supermarkets for seven years. Only 4% of the green beans sampled tested had high risk levels of pesticides. And what are these high risk? They don't tell us at what level they consider high risk. But some of the levels found on contaminated beans were alarming. One green bean sample from 2022 had levels of methamidophis that were 100 times the level consumer reports scientists considered safe. Consumer report scientists. Methamidophis has been banned in the United States and on green bean imports for over a decade, raising question about why it's still showing up in our supermarket produce. Hey, kale, watermelon, and even some organic foods pose high risk for pesticides. We see that from time to time. Pesticides, fruit, vegetables, organic, farming, health. It's all important to note that the Consumer Report scientists have stricter standards for what they consider safe than those of the Environmental Protection Agency, which the FDA falls under, as we know. The U.S. government body that sets all the levels known for their tolerances. This is the EPA we're still talking about. The Alliance for Food and Farming, which is a farming industry organization, notes that 99% of vegetables tested by the USDA meet government safety standards for pesticide residue. 
But many scientists, including those behind the Consumer Report study, believe that EPA tolerances are often set far too high, putting consumers at risk. A lot of these EPA tolerances aren't consistent with the best science, says Michael Hansen, a senior scientist at, who else? Consumer Reports. They were set a number of years ago, and they don't take into account situations where there are multiple pesticide residues on a single sample. The data are now available, and the computing power is now there to more accurately assess the actual risk. The strongest evidence of these dangers posed by pesticides come from farm workers and pesticide applicators, as Consumer Reports found, who are exposed to much higher levels of the chemical when they are applied to crops. On-the-job exposure to pesticides have been linked to higher risk of Parkinson's disease, several forms of cancer, diabetes, and other health problems. When it comes to consumers, the risk of eating foods contaminated by pesticides grow over time. For most of the population, a single serving of a contaminated fruit is unlikely to cause harm. But routinely consumption of a contaminated fruit or vegetable over months or even years can magnify this risk. Children and pregnant women are particularly vulnerable because some pesticides can be endocrine disruptors, which may interfere with hormones responsible for the development of key bodily systems, especially the reproductive system. Hey, until next time, follow me for more content. Stay blessed. Donna Ray Abbott out.